Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine, and this week I'm going to recreate a classic arcade game using running data. In one of my previous videos, I tried to recreate a classic arcade game from my childhood, the air hockey table. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. I had so much fun building this table and it just brought me back um, so many memories, good memories from summer holidays in arcades. Another game that I really like from the arcades is the horse racing game. So it's the kind of two formats where you have horses along a field and you gamble on them and they move along kind of one at a time racing each other and it's very dramatic and the first person to the end wins and they win uh, the money if you bet on the right horse. Another one you use kind of wooden balls and you throw them up a slope and if they land in a hole that's further away your horse moves along and you're competing with other players sitting next to you. So it's a race, yeah it's a horse race and they have these like metal horses and I thought it'd be so brilliant to recreate this using people and their running data. So like everything in my life, running is a competition to me, not a speed competition because I'm not very fast, but just the fact that I'm running is like, I say to my husband, oh, did you run this week? Or to my brother. And it's, a, it's a motivating, it's motivating, honest. <laughs> so I thought we could motivate each other by having competition. So we would have four runners on a field and the first person to get to 100 kilometers wins. But each week, each day, it updates your runner's position based on how far you've run. So if you run 50 kilometers in total over the four weeks, your horse would be halfway down the field. This is a bit beyond what I normally do. I don't normally work with motors, so I'm quite excited for this project. Let's get designing. Design-wise, I have a really complicated design, which I'll show you in a second, but this is the basic idea. We're going to have some pulleys and some tracks. So this pulley will be connected to a motor and this pulley will just be to move this track along. We'll be 3D printing these and we'll buy the tracks online. I'm thinking um, 30 centimeters should be long enough. So our little runners will stick onto the pulley and if we click, we'll go wee, and they'll move along. Simple, right? <laughs> if you look, if you're here and you're looking down the box like this, wee, this is what you'll see. So we have three runners here and they'll be standing on this kind of stage. So this will be connected to the track and this will slide along kind of the, the field and it will stop the, the runners from falling over and it'll give it some stability. So this is probably gonna be a really custom 3D printed stage. So if we look at this a bit closer, we're gonna have a switch on the box and every runner is actually gonna to return to the start. So we're gonna have a switch for each runner at the very start that says, you know, you're at the start and the motor will stop then. So instead of having a switch at the end, it's actually gonna be one at the start and then we're gonna to have to, the motors are gonna to have to be encoders to work out how long, it, how far it is between this bit and this bit so everybody stops before they get to the end. So I don't want two switches, but I definitely want a switch here. So the animation will actually be, everyone starts at the beginning and then everybody runs up to where they've run so far. Tech-wise, I'm gonna try Arduino for this project. So here's a quad DC motor shield for the Arduino development board. This will work with the Wi-Fi Arduino Uno. Um, and this lets us add four encoder motors on here and then gives us lots of pins because we're gonna need two pins for each encoder and also a pin for each switch to make the runners stop. This is the encoded motor that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna get four of these. Finally, this is the micro switch. It doesn't have a picture, but I've checked the measurements and I think this will work with what I need. It's quite a long one. So there's the, the switch there that will get clicked when the runner um, reverses. It actually get kicked by the runner. You'll find the entire shopping list on the Element 14 community website in the links below. In my last project, I designed the air hockey table using Lightburn. I had a few sketches, but I just felt it was easier to do it in Lightburn given like I didn't have a lot of holes and it wasn't a very complicated box. This uh, seems to have triggered my husband <laughs> and he insisted on designing this one himself 
using FreeCAD. And I think he went a bit crazy, went a bit overboard. So here is the design. Um, it's great, you know, I can't, I can't fault it, fault him really. You'll see it's, it's a beautiful design. Um, not that easy to assemble, but you know, he's not an expert. This is not what he does for a living. So we have the motors here. So you can see these are the two motors, the right angle motors. So we've got them kind of mirrored to each other. Then we have four cogs. So this cog is being moved by this motor and this is the end cog for that motor. Really nice setup, it just kind of saves on space. So they come in pairs. Then back to this drawing here, we have just these um, acrylic slats holding everything together. Lots of screw holes for the motors. We have these 3D printed stands here with the, the hex end to them. So they secure everything together and then everything to the bottom of the box. And then you can just see poking up here, this is the micro switches. So this would be the start of the box. So the runners come along here and they kick the back of the micro switch and then the motor will stop. That's where the Arduino is going to go and the box is held together with tabs and screws. This end is the same except we don't have any micro switches. Oh, we do. Okay, just in his drawing, <laughs> he's put the micro switches in. So these 3D printed ones will still have the slots for the micro switches because it's easier to print them that way rather than trying to redesign them. Or so I'm told. So he's exported all these files to me so I can get ahead and start printing and cutting everything. The only change is in the box, I'm gonna have a hole here for the switch and a hole at the back for the power cable. What do you think of his design skills? <laughs> Let's get making. Let's try and assemble it all together. So this is the base plate with the Arduino case um, in position. This is the only hole that I can tell that's gone wrong because this doesn't line up, but everything else is uh, spot on. So let's, let's build it. The first thing I'm gonna do is screw some screws into the motor, which is a really tight fit um, onto the first laser cut mount. The next thing we're going to screw on is the switch plates. We're only doing two motors at the moment because um, they come in pairs. So we're going to mount them onto here. So see this hole here goes onto the back like that. One feature of the board I really like. So one end we have holes for those 3D printed stands, but at the other end we have slats because if we need to tension the um, track, we could just pull them back and then screw it in at the end of this rather than the front of it. And I really like that idea. Surrounding the chassis then, we have these laser cut stands followed by the cogs, the 3D printed cogs. So you can see the three of them all go on like that. And then on the bottom, we have our uh, another 3D printed bit with a switch on it. So that kind of goes and there, and we have a super long nut that goes all the way through. So this motor will be moving this cog, and this cog is to hold the end of the opposite motor. So that's why we also have two switches. So the second um, switch plate will go in here when I screw it on. It's such a complicated design, but it really, it does work. Let me screw all this together. Here's the other side then in blue. It does have the holders for the switches, but it was just easier to print them in the same design, but we don't need this. You can see there's no switches there. So that's it standing. So you've got your three acrylic holders, motors, two cogs, and then your tracks. So here are the motors in place with the stands. So it's not very tight though. This one's tight and this one's loose. And I don't know why. Um, I think they're a little bit crooked, but I think that's gonna be the tricky bit is getting it the right kind of tightness. Um, I've started to wire it up a bit. I've got the switches soldered and wired onto the board with a bit of breadboard in here. Um, I need to do this one next. But um, I've also got a clip, a 3D printed a clip that goes on here. Um, but when we did our first test run with the motor, the clip didn't reach the switch. <laughs> so it didn't stop. 
Um, so I'm reprinting this at the moment. So that's the hole for the runner. <laughs> Check out the runner. So this guy is purple. So they'll go on like that. <laughs> and this is me, glitter. So yeah, that will go on the track. Um, I also need to laser cut the sides and the top. Before I put the lid, I just want to show you this bit. So we created a little kind of gap to be able to put the runner in. And then it will hopefully slide smoothly along the track like that. Just testing out the motors, um, just backwards and forwards, not doing any encoding or checking that the switches work yet. Just checking that the runner can glide along here. Um, check it out. <laughs> And now I have added the switches, the switch code, and the second runner. And I've got a function called go back to start line. So when they hit the switch, the motor will stop running. So I'm just going to run that by resetting. <laughs> that is beautiful. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? Oh my God, I was so excited by that test that I brought everything down to the basement and I wired it all up. We've got our four motors, our four switches, everything's wired, everything's working. Let me show you the electronics a bit closer before we have the test run from Strava. We've got six wires coming out of every encoded motor. Four of them are for the encoder to work and two of them are just for the motor to work on its own. So these are the two motor wires and these are the four encoder wires. What I'll do is I'll put up a table on the screen which will show you which motors are connected to which pins on the Arduino board. Every micro switch needs ground and every motor also needs ground and power. So there weren't enough ground and power pins on the Arduino board. So I've got this breadboard inside the box and it fits really nicely actually. This is my power jack coming from the back of the board from the power slot there. I am going to add a switch to this as well. So this is the start of the racetrack. And so this is the motors which have the switches connected next to them. So each switch has two wires, uh, ground and data, and they are so satisfying when <laughs> they're clicked. If we look a bit closer at the Arduino and the, the motorboard on top of it, this is one thing I was worried about was all these wires possibly catching in the tracks above, especially the pins going into the board. Let me show you what I've done with that. It's a bit tricky to see, <laughs> but I've put in um, right angle pins so you can see one that's spare. So that's actually, it's not pointing up, it's going out like an L or an R. Then where I ran out of right angle pins, I just bent the pins and stuck them in. So that's stopping all these wires from catching, but it is close. Ooh, I'll have to talk to my designer. One final thing I've done is I've added a switch to the front of the box and a different powered barrel to the back and a hole as well for the Arduino cable. So I could wire the Arduino directly onto this um, power system um, and I might do that eventually but the wire I've used is just super thick and I can't get two wires in there um, at the moment. So it's definitely something I could do in the future just to make things um, a bit easier. And I've run these wires around the back of the motors so they're not in the way. Now everything's ready electronically, it is time. The Strava code is quite long-winded, so I've put that as an extra on the Element 14 community for you. To move the motors, then I have four encoder motors. So each motor has an A and B pin for encoders. You choose these, um, actually really low on pins on the board. So these are all the pins. We record the distance each encoder goes. These are values from the motor board itself. So each motor has a direction and a speed. These pins are like given. I've added four switches to my board and I've wired them up to ground. And these are the pins the switches are on. In my setup, I just set up all my pins, all my switches, my directions. I turn everything off and I initialize the encoders. Let me show you that. 
So we set up the A and B pins as inputs and then we attach an interrupt. So when encoder A changes, we call a wheel speed for each different motor. So motor one encoder A, wheel speed one. So wheel speed one increases the encoder distance if encoder B is increasing and decreases it if not. So that just kind of keeps track of our distance, you know, how far we've gone along the track. And we can use this then to say, okay, we've gone this far, we need to stop. We do that for every single encoder, every single motor. So now we know how the motors move, we can look at the run runners function. So that receives the runner ID and the amount of kilometers that that runner has run. So it's actually in meters, so we just need to divide that by a thousand first of all, and then convert that number into the encoder distance. So on this uh, field, it's 4,600 is the encoder distance from start to end. So I need to calculate, say if I ran 20 kilometers, what that would be if my field is 100 kilometers, you know, just do some some maths here and work out what my runner needs to run. Uh, I'm just going to display that. Then for each runner, uh, we have their motor and their speed and their current encoder distance. So we're just creating some variables then. Then when we know that we've moved, I think I've got that twice though, we turn on the motor and start running. Now I know here, because this is a C, I could just use pointers. <laughs> But I am so incredibly lazy that I refuse to kind of even look up how to do pointers. I learned them in university, but um, this is me being lazy. So every time we move the encoder, so encoder one is being moved by that function we saw earlier. It's like it's running in the background. We're going to set encoder distance to encoder one if our runner is number zero. How lazy is that? But it works. So each runner will run their distance um, according to the length of the field. Here we have the final demo. So we're connecting to our Wi-Fi. Um, we're not going back to start because it's not on. So here we go. Now we're going to get the access tokens. So there's a slight problem with one of them. The When you get code from a friend, the code from the friend, it expires really quickly. So the fourth person uh, was someone at my husband's work and it kept like, they would tell my husband and then he would tell me and it'd be like half an hour, an hour later. So unfortunately we don't have any data from them. But here's the data. That was really quick, wasn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> so my brother has just like destroyed us. He is runner two. Watch him go. I don't know if he's winding me up by running 99.32 kilometers. <laughs> Cause he's not trying to go over the line. Um, but there we all are. That's the, that's the race. <laughs> Look how far I've run. So my husband and I tend to run together. So we've run 15.0 uh, kilometers in the last six weeks. <laughs> not, not a record by any, by any means. And that was the race. <laughs> How'd you guys like this video? Do you want to see more motor videos from me? Cause I don't normally use motors. Do you like the build process? Would you like more information about the code, the electronics. What did you think of the design of the box and the motor stands? Should I keep my designer? Let me know in the comments below or on the Element 14 community website. I'm really excited to see what you say. Until next time.